in this Heritage Conference. A new uh, conference member, Portage, is down the road eight miles away at River Valley, and now a merger that took place, took shape in November of last year when the United and Black Lake Valley schools voted to merge the two struggling programs from the standpoint of low numbers, injuries. So here we are, first ever meeting Homer Center in United Valley. Uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting time, Mark. I think uh, the, the thing that tells me is that this conference, we've always bragged about it, at least I always have bragged about it, uh, is getting better. If people are wanting to get into this conference, that says a lot about it. And I'm so happy for Kevin Marabito. He has struggled for the last couple, of, but he persevered. He got this. He got 50 kids here. He's got something to work with now, and that's going to be a problem for Homer Center. Kevin Marabito, I think the right man for the right job. He's rebuilt some programs before. It's hard to believe United had nearly climbed the mountain in 2018 yes. with a trip to the District 6 Championship, and then it started with a Kyle Silk defection, and things just seemed to go downhill, and they have uh, really struggled. As a matter of fact, one is the number of wins between United and Black Lake Valley. Uh, last year, United finished 0-9. The Vikings were 1-9 with a 39-21 victory over Myersdale. So these two teams have struggled. Kevin Marabito try to put these pieces to this puzzle together. 51 on the roster, but only six seniors. Yeah, and you keep in mind, Black Lake Valley at one time was a strong program. They competed for the Appalachian title a number of times. And uh, I see a name that's Schilling on the roster. That goes, takes me back quite a bit. Good good heritage, good good genes in that group, as with the United Lions. It's going to be a good group. Homer Center comes off of an 8-4 and four season. A lot of people back, seven or eight starters on both sides of the ball, but sometimes people forget what you lost. They lost the heart and soul of their defense in Justin Walbeck and a 1,200-yard rusher in Colin Troop. Yeah, it's going to be tough to replace, but that's part of the game, and that's why you have Greg Page. He knows how to move pieces, and I'm sure they'll find answers for those holes very quickly here tonight. We want to thank Indiana Regional Medical Center, as always, our presenting sponsor of all of our radio broadcasts, and Homer Center Football Digital Streams on the Renda Digital TV Network being presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and the Twin Cities Event Hall that you'll be hearing a lot about in the weeks ahead. They've done a marvelous job down there, and we thank them for their sponsorship. Lord, this would have been the 77th meeting uh, between Homer Center and United. Technically, it's the first meeting with United <laughs> Valley. Do you know how many times through the years Homer Center met Black Lake Valley? Yeah, you told me that. Only two, and I, I, I don't know if that's even accurate. Uh, you're that, doubting me? It, no, I know you're night. right because you have, you're never wrong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you look marvelous here, by the way. On our <laughs> ITT pregame show, coming up next, you're going to hear and see from both coaches. Uh, Kevin Marabito is up next, the head coach of the United Valley Lions. We'll follow that up with Homer Center Wildcat 15th year head coach Greg Page. Coach Page 105 and 62 in his first 15 season, 629 winning percentage. He was 10 and 5 against United. Coach Marabito in his eighth season at United. He's 24 and 50, just a 325 winning percentage, 2 and 5 against Homer Center. So we'll keep things rolling on our ITT pregame show. Thank you, IRMC. Thank you, Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, United Valley Lions, and Homer Center Wildcats on the WCCS Wildcats Football Network. When your vehicle needs tended to, take it to Baroni's Auto Care. Baroni's Auto Care inspects, does minor repairs, including brakes and exhausts, as well as oil changes and tune-ups. And if you're looking for tires, Baroni's Auto Care sells all brands. Baroni's Auto Care is currently accepting new customers. So when your vehicle needs inspected or repaired, take it to Baroni's Auto Care right off Route 56. Look for the sign in Brush Valley. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Hip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. 
Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sales. Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Johnston Nursery Landscaping. Check them out on Facebook. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well. From your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. I'm Jake Slobodnik with this week's trip around the Heritage Conference, driven by Mark Arbuckle Nissan in Indiana. Even though they lost star quarterback Bo Schwartz to graduation, the West Shemokin Wolves bring back plenty of star quality talent as they look to take down the Marion Center Stingers on their home turf. Meanwhile, the Northern Cambria Colts look to upset the Cambria Heights Highlanders tonight in a David vs. Goliath matchup in Northern Cambria. Our U92 Game of the Week features an historic rivalry matchup as the Purchase Line Red Dragons travel to Penn's Manor to take on the Comets. Todd Marino has the call on 92.5 FM U92 and on U92radio.com. Looking to make a statement in their inaugural game in the Heritage Conference, Coach Marty Slonick and his Portage Mustangs stampede into Blairsville and look to take down the River Valley Panthers. Chuck Clark and I have the call on Cat Country 106.3 FM and on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Finally, Coach Kevin Marabito and his newly formed United Valley Lions look to... I'm Jake Slobodnik with this week's trip around the Heritage Conference, driven by Mark Arbuckle Nissan in Indiana. Even though they lost star quarterback Bo Schwartz to graduation, the West Shemokin Wolves bring back plenty of star quality talent as they look to take down the Marion Center Stingers on their home turf. Meanwhile, the Northern Cambria Colts look to upset the Cambria Heights Highlanders tonight in a David vs. Goliath matchup in Northern Cambria. Our U92 Game of the Week features an historic rivalry matchup as the Purchase Line Red Dragons travel to Penn's Manor to take on the Comets. Todd Marino has the call on 92.5 FM U92 and on U92radio.com. Looking to make a statement in their inaugural game in the Heritage Conference, Coach Marty Slonick and his Portage Mustangs stampede into Blairsville and look to take down the River Valley Panthers. Chuck Clark and I have the call on Cat Country 106.3 FM and on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Finally, Coach Kevin Marabito and his newly formed United Valley Lions look to upset the Homer Center Wildcats tonight, who were picked to finish first in the preseason coaches poll. That game can be heard on WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160, and it can also be live-streamed on Renda Digital TV. Links for all broadcasts and streams can be found on all four of our Renda Media websites. That's all for this week. Join us next week for another trip around the Heritage Conference driven by Mark Arbuckle Nissan. I'm Jake Slobodnik, and I'll see you next week. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all our student athletes and their families every success on the gridiron. Friday Night Lights. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all our student athletes and their families every success on the gridiron. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for our students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. These have been challenging times, and I salute not only all of our students but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. 
I liked the one with the stained glass ship in the front door. You liked the one with the two car garage. But then we found it, the one. It had a porch swing, a yard for our dog, a room for your office. Sure, it was 95 years old, but when we met with Amy at S&T Bank, she mentioned they had been around for over 115 years, and that made me feel better. Because even if we won't be here in 115 years, maybe our grandkids will be. Hi everybody, opening night of the high school football season. Our ITT pregame show continues from Memorial Field in Homer City with head coach Kevin Marabito of the United Valley Lions because in November, the United School District and Black Lake Valley, they voted to combine football programs and coach like a lot of small schools. You at United were struggling with numbers, they were struggling with numbers. So somebody came up with the uh, concept. The schools are only about 14 and a half miles apart, put them together. So they put you in charge to put this uh, program uh, together, 51 players. So tell, talk about the logistics uh, that have gone into this. Well, to start it, you know, it was kind of scary. You know, you, you didn't know what was going to happen, but, you know, we, we started putting a team together probably, I would say, January. We had some game nights, uh, work things. We went to, you know, the passing camps, the summer workouts. You know, the biggest obstacle was where were you going to practice? You know, we, we decided you had to find a home. Originally, they wanted us every other week, one week at Black Lake, one week at United, where, you know, right away is, with my experience, you got to have a home. You know, we, we decided this this was going to be the home. And, you know, right now, I mean, Black Lake has, has really chipped in. I mean, they're they're busting the kids down every day, but the kids have bought into it, and it's it's been, it's been fun. I mean, it, it really has. I mean, the numbers help you. It, it's just... Uh, you know, for three years, it's, it's been, you know, it, it probably aged me about 20 years with, with everything that's happened over three, and hopefully this year is going to be better. Well, I count 51 players on the roster. I know you have a couple that are nicked up, may not play tonight, but 26 from Black Lake Valley, 25 from United. So the good news is it creates competition, does it? Some, doesn't it? Because that's something it, you haven't had. It does, Mark, because the last three years, I mean, when a, when a player went down, there, there wasn't a lot of competition in practice, but your, your next move is you were putting a freshman in. You know, and freshmen, you know, as much as people think that freshmen can play varsity football, it's a big step. And we, we found that out for three years. I mean, we're this year, you know, we've had some injuries right now, but it's, it's devastating, but not to the point it was the last few years. I mean, the competition in practice, Kids can't take a night off. I mean, they, they better be ready to, they gotta be ready to practice because someone's ready to take their position. And it, it's created a lot of competition. All of that being said, the one thing that also stood out to me, only six seniors among the group. Yeah, we're relatively young. I mean, we were young last year as a football team, but we're, we're even younger this year. I mean, it, it's it's gonna take some time, but you know, the nice part is, is even with what we have there, you know, there's some experienced players there, but it's just learning our system and, you know, blending together as a team. And it, it, it's really coming right now. Quarterback battle, Isaac Worthington, who unfortunately played just two quarters last year. He was hurt, knocked out for the season. And Black Lake Valley, they had a quarterback by the name of Braden Brown, who I understand is now hurt. But there was competition. But Isaac, good to have him healthy, and he won the job, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, it, it's right now, you know, Isaac, Isaac won that battle. But, you know, Braden's dinged up. But the nice part, if something does happen, we, we have a quality quarterback coming in, you know, to back him up. And that's not saying down the road if something else happens, you know, Braden could be in there. But, you know, as of right now, Isaac won that battle, you know, through camp. Players you're counting on, Kevin. Well, I mean, Cade McCauley's probably one of our bigger ones. Uh, Chris Chris Clark, uh, A.J. Villa, you know, Dylan Ambrose, uh, Gage Grassmeyer, uh, just just numerous kids. I mean, there, there's so many to mention. It, it's just, you know, I'm a big guy. I don't I don't like mentioning too many names because you always upset somebody. So it's you know the the least amount that I mentioned. But you know, I, I think everybody is going to chip in because I you know I've been telling them since day one this is going to be a team. It, it's not it's not one individual that's going to go out and win a football game. You know, we we got to blend as a team. And you know, right now we're we're starting to to blend in. It's just not a good matchup tonight. But you know, I mean, we're we're looking forward to the challenge. Talk about that matchup tonight here at Memorial Field, Homer Center. 
uh, an experienced football team, no question. Uh, I mean, one thing about it, I mean, I've known, you know, Coach Page for a long time. I mean, he, he does a great job with that program, and he's going to have those kids ready. I mean, we, we know what they, they return eight on offense, eight on defense. They're, they're experienced kids. They're explosive kids. Their offensive, defensive lines are big. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to do fundamental football. But I, I always tell our kids, if you do the little things right, the big things will take care of themselves. I mean, and that's what we got to do. We got to do the little things tonight and just see what happens. It's going to be a lot of excitement with the, what's happened here. I would think getting off to a good start, gaining some confidence would be important. It, it, the biggest thing I've always said for as long as I've coached, I've always said that week one's your most important week. I mean, you, you get through all the off-season conditioning, you, you get through passing camps, you get through the, the two weeks of camp. You know, th this is an important game. I mean, you, you got to try to get it, you know, and our, our biggest fear coming in, Mark, is you can teach football, but you can't teach how to win, you know, and that's that's the, the obstacle right now. I mean, it, it, it's been... I mean, it's been in the back of my mind, you know, how, how do I teach kids to win? But you can. It, it's they got to get that mindset that they can win. And, you know, if we can get that confidence going, we, we could be a pretty good football se team as the season goes on. Finally, Coach, we'll close with this uh, very quickly. I know the late Jerry Page, Greg's father, meant a lot to you. And it was great to see you at the Laurel Valley Field dedication as they memorialized him forever there, naming him the field, naming the field after him. It was a great dedication, great ceremony. I know you spent some time with the family afterwards. It was a great day, wasn't it? it talk about the influence Jerry had on you. I mean, you know, I said it before. He, he was he was a father figure to me. I mean, he. He taught me a lot about football, but he taught me a lot about life. And that, that's the way Coach Page was. I mean, many, many times, you know, you, you think, you, you look at his record, he was worried about winning. He wasn't worried about winning. He, he wanted kids to be successful in life. And it didn't matter if you played football or you didn't play football. I mean, he, he reached out to everybody. And his, his influence on me, I mean, I, I would have never missed that, you know, no matter what, to, to see that. I mean, it was a tribute well-deserved. and. You know, he, he was just a great man, you know, and I, as I said before, he's probably, he's a head coach up, up above somewhere, but, you know, it was just a great day and it was well deserving for him. Says a lot about you that you were there, coach. You're a great man yourself and we're looking forward to covering tonight's game. Thanks for doing this and we'll talk to you after the game as well. Always a pleasure, Mark. Kevin, uh, Kevin Marabito, head coach of the United Valley Lions. They go against Homer Center tonight. We'll be coming back with Homer Center Wildcat head coach, Greg Page when our ITT pregame show continues right here on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Welcome back to Memorial Field as the Homer Center Wildcats get set to host the new United Valley Lions here tonight in the season opener. We welcome you back to our ITT pregame show in the first edition of the head coach Greg Page show, which is presented all season long by our friends at Wallback Insurance in Homer City. Stop by and see Rob and his team or visit them online at wallbackinsurance.com. And uh, coach, 16th season and uh, always exciting opening night, and you'll do it here at the Friendly Confines. Yeah, I mean, we love playing at the Friendly Confines, as you put it. Um, 16th season, just as excited for this one as uh, our staff was for the first season. So hopefully our boys are ready to go. We've got a good opponent coming into town. Before we talk about tonight's opponent, I want to go back to Saturday. I know I did an interview out at Laurel Valley with you at the old Laurel Valley High School where they dedicated the field uh, where they still play youth football uh, in honor and in memory of your late father who we lost sadly right around Christmas time back in December. And we missed Jerry Page, but it was a very nice ceremony, so well done, and a great honor for you and your family. Absolutely. I mean, it was just a tremendous thing. Nice afternoon. Uh, it was very well put together by the Ligonier Laurel Valley Youth Football Association, and it was nice to see some former players, former coaches. Um, you know, we were very touched as a family. Uh, he spent a lot of time there, a lot of years um, at the school and, and coaching and things like that, teaching and coaching, so we were very honored. And one of the guys there 
tonight's opposing coach, Kevin Marabito, who's been close with your family, was uh, awfully close with your dad, wasn't he? Yeah, Kevin spent a lot of time on my dad's staff. He played when my dad was an assistant in the 70s. Uh, as I've said many times before, Kevin was one of my coaches in midget football. Then we coached together under my father. Uh, there's, a, there's a really good friendship between the families, and uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Coach, a lot of high expectations, as you know, um, at Media Day, for what it's worth. Last year, Cambria Heights, they were selected to win the Heritage Conference, and they did. This year, you have the honor of being uh, picked by your peers to win the Heritage Conference. I guess you can duck that, those expectations or you can embrace them. Well, you know me, I really, it, I really don't care to, <laughs> to get involved with all that. I guess it's something that's neat for the public and you guys and the media and stuff, and it's, it's, it's nice. Um, but we have to go do the job. I mean, really, it, it means absolutely nothing. Uh, the other day, I was kind of chewing on our guys, and I said it doesn't – those rankings are preseason polls. You can shove them. Um, and, you know, hopefully trying to motivate your guys every week. It doesn't matter who you're playing or who's in this conference. Every week you're getting somebody's best shot, and you have to be ready. You have seven or eight starters back on both sides of the ball, but sometimes, as I told you over at Media Day at Winber, uh, or I told you a couple of days later, because I guess technically you weren't there, there but yeah. uh, it, you lost some key players too. You lost a 1,200-yard rusher in uh, Colin Troop and Walbeck, Justin Walbeck on the defensive side, among others. Yeah, actually, I think we lost five starters on both sides, um, and they were they were tough kids. I mean, Walbeck was kind of a record setter with tackles, and Troop really had a breakout year, and uh, Landon Hill supported him as our second back. And so, yeah, we lose quality kids. I mean, you got you know the other guys were just guys that gritted it out every game, um, worked hard. They were leaders. Uh, sometimes that stuff is just as hard to replace as the ability or talent of players. Walk us through your preseason camp and how things went in your estimation. Uh, you know, I you know we've got some injuries. Uh, we got some younger kids that are banged up. Uh, but all in all, heat camp and, and regular camp I thought went pretty well. We had a tough scrimmage. I mean, Winber is a tough physical team. They're still in their upswing where they have some kids back. They're very aggressive. I think it opened our eyes of some of our guys that hey, we need to step up and do a little more. Um, you know, but it's always tough. It's a typical first scrimmage, and so you know you're 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 ready to go against somebody else, and and they. They were a huge challenge. Back on November 9th, the Black Lake Valley School District and United School District voted to combine their football programs. I have to wonder if that's the first step towards something bigger and more grandiose down the road, but uh, we'll save that for later. Um, I'm sure you kind of said, oh, I wonder who their first game is with this new merger with 51 kids, and lo and behold, here they are tonight. Yeah, yeah, and you know what, though? In the end, I think it was two school boards – uh, looking out for the um, for the benefit of kids to try to get them a way to, to play in situations where they could play a schedule. I know you know Kevin. He'll tell you the last couple of years they've had times where you know they've had to to not play games and that's difficult. It's giving opportunity for kids. Um, I'm in favor of that. On the flip side, it prevents more of a challenge for uh, us smaller schools when there's some teams in, in the area. There have been some co-ops and it just makes it it just makes it tougher. I mean, you got to be ready. You got to be prepared. I'm sure one thing, and I know from talking to Kevin on the pregame show, it certainly has created some good competition, and uh, when you have competition, that makes people better. What did you see from them? I'm sure you saw improvement uh, with their scrimmage against Connemaw Township. Yeah, you know, and it's hard. I'm sure they're looking at ours thinking, you know, is this what, what are we seeing here? Um, I thought they did some good things. I thought they were tough up front. I mean, um, Connemaw Township didn't appear to try to run the ball a whole lot between the tackles, but when they did run the ball, United played it very well. Um, Connemaw Township had some speed on the edges and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So it, it's one of those things. I know Kevin. I mean, I've known Kevin for years. Um, he's assembled a good staff. He's got good guys. They're going to coach him up. They're going to be well coached. I mean, it's just a matter of we need to win every battle with the positions and we need to, we need to just do more than they do. What will be the keys for you tonight? We have to be consistent on offense. I mean, we really need to get the ball moving. We need to get down the field and, and, and have drives and, um, you know, can't have mistakes or penalties. When In the past, when we've gotten rolling and we've gotten good, you know, uh, 8, 10, 12 play drives going, I think, we're, I think we're tougher to beat. So we have to be consistent that way and kind of take what they give us. Greg, you mentioned a couple of kids nicked up. 
one of them that won't dress tonight, your backup quarterback, Angelo Alexander, who I thought really, if I had to pick one or two players uh, that performed very, very well in that scrimmage, he'd have been at the top of my list. And uh, unfortunately, uh, one of your senior wide receivers uh, with a, an injury, we hope it's not significant. I know you'll have to wait for further testing, but it's always tough when it's a senior, and I'm talking about Zenizek. Yeah, I mean, Austin's worked so hard. Um, you know, he came into his own last year in our slot position. Great hands. He ran good routes. He's, you know, he's a football-savvy kid. We were looking for him to be a two-way starter for us this year. And he, um, you know, he, he hurt his knee in June in a seven-on-seven. Seven. But, but worked like a dog to, to rehab it and get better and do everything uh, that was asked of him. He had a setback. Uh, we're hopeful that there's going to be something not too far down the road where, he, where he'll be able to go. Coach, we appreciate you doing this. I know you've reminded your guys uh, that last year the season opener did not go well here at Memorial Field against a very good eventual champion, Cambria Heights Highlanders team. And then you ended the season on this very same field with a loss, which uh, hasn't happened because you hadn't lost in the in the playoffs. So uh, not the way to bookend things. And I know getting off to a stronger start here in 22 is very important to you, isn't it? I think it's very critical. I mean, you know, there were some of our seniors – uh, that, that, that came to us as a staff, we didn't have to ask them, and they uh, they had a bitter taste of how the season ended. And that's just – there's no discredit to anybody. Guilfoyle ends up going on and winning the state title. Um, but they I, I, I think they weren't happy with that, and I think they're using that as motivation, as they should. Um, I hope that we're going to come out and learn from that from last season with our veteran guys and, you know, every week just try to do some good things. Coach, thanks for doing this, first of ten, and hopefully more beyond that. Uh, we'll talk to you after the game as well. Thank you guys very much. Head Coach Greg Page brought to you by Walbeck Insurance. Visit Walbeck Insurance online 24-7 at walbeckinsurance.com. Coming back with more on WCCS and Renda Digital TV too. When we continue with our ITT pregame show, you're listening to Homer Center and United Valley Football on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business.
I'm Shannon Lipniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. Great. Ship banking, one customer at a time, S and T Bank. Hopefully the rains are going to stay away. There's some rain in the forecast. It's on the radar, Not some small sales. I don't think it's going to be anything significant. And a uh, good crowd coming on hand. We were looking across the way, Ward Hilliard, eight buses between the Black Lake Valley and United School Districts. So a lot of enthusiasm. We're going to get to the Luther Ford keys to the game in just a moment. But I want to thank some folks, uh, everybody at Renda Media. Sut football week. If you're in the offices, you wouldn't believe how much work is involved to get ready for week one when you're talking about four games across the Indiana County radio network, two video streams. So we thank the cell staff, the production team, the uh, traffic department, business department, all of the announcers, our digital manager, John Smathers. I can't tell you what we've put him through. We've put you through a lot the past few days, haven't we? He's not on camera. Um, but he does a, a great job. We're wired for sound. We've uh, got a few cords in this We're booth, wired, don't we? Period. <laughs> and the most important uh, cog of our machine just walked in, our statistician, oh. Jerry Rossi. Oh. Our spotter is Dennis Mester. Our videographer camera person upstairs on the upper level is Justly Sharp, I believe, yeah. is working the game Justly's on camera. Congratulations to her and her accomplishments in track and field and winning a gold in the state uh, uh, track and field meet last year. Ward, let's get to the Luther Ford keys to the game, brought to you by Luther Ford, Indiana County's number one Ford dealer, voted, voted best of Indiana County in that contest for best new car dealership and best place to buy a truck. What do you have? Yeah, well, you know, United Valley does travel well. I haven't seen the field rib like this since the playoffs. Uh, that, that's really significant. That's great to see. High school at its best. For them, you know, two team, two schools, first game together. they got to stay in the game early on, Mark. No blunders, no big mistakes. Just play solid football. Don't give the Wildcats a big edge on the, on their initial drive. Second thing they got to do, knowing Kevin, they got to establish a run. They, they are a, a run-heavy team. I know Kevin thinks that way. So hopefully, uh, and from their perspective, they can do that. And finally, the, they got to stay At away from the turnovers. I can't help but throw that in there. That's the big. Level. For the Wildcats, we are going to go to the anthem the real quick. They need to get the running Wildcat, game going. Get Logan Hill going right away. Some nice Jones short passes Stillars. from Cole McInerney to break it up. And then the defense needs to just come to the fore. And I think... Uh, Homer Center, they're going to need to find ways and be creative in getting the ball into the hands of Michael Krajosik. He, <laughs> he's just too talented to give him a few pass attempts. You're going to have to use him in the running game, get that jet sweep going. If you're going to use it, let's uh, use Michael and get, get him going, too. Uh, I think he's going to be a key for Homer Center, particularly with Austin Zenizak likely lost yeah. for the season. And you know that jet sweep struggled mightily last year, so let's hope it works this year for him. Our ITT pregame show will continue with the starting lineups when we continue from Memorial Field in Homer City. Our studio engineer tonight, the executive producer on the radio side, is Michael Burdick. Our digital producer in the booth with us here at Memorial Field is John Smith. Mathers. It's going to be a big night of football. Hopefully the rains will stay away. We hope you're on your way to Memorial Field. And don't forget uh, the video stream, new this year, the Renda Digital TV uh, Network. You can find us, uh, subscribe to us on, uh, by subscribe, I don't mean pay. Just go to YouTube.com and search Renda Digital TV, or you can find the link at WCCSRadio.com. We know we're going to have a big listening audience on the radio and a big uh, viewing audience audience on Renda Digital TV. We thank IRMC and the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, which includes the Twin Cities of Ed Hall. We're coming back to Memorial Field right after this on the WCCS Wildcat Radio Network.
The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well stocked. Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool. Or how about shuffleboard? What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. Hi, my name is Billy, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith bus. We have a really fun bus driver. And guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new drivers. That's right, Billy. Smith Bus Company is hiring. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff? Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. That's S&T Bank. Well, Ward has moaned about a lot of things through the years, including the scoreboard. But Ward, the scoreboard is brand new. They have a new scoreboard in the south end zone. LED lights. You don't have to go out there on your ladder and change the light bulbs anymore. It looks great. I think we have a picture of it on the video side. As John Smathers has zoomed in on the new scoreboard, and we thank the sponsors that made that scoreboard possible, including Sapinka Law, Walbeck Insurance, and Luther Ford Lincoln that just brought you the keys to the game. Well done. Yep. I'm glad they did it the way they did it, too. It's not real complicated, so a guy like me can still read it. <laughs> All right, and I think we have the scoreboard on the screen this year that we've been able to add. The new technology with the scoreboard has afforded us to the opportunity to add the running clock and the score on our video stream as well. Let's get to the starting lineups brought to you by Maine's Chiropractic in Homer City. Chiropractic healthcare actually improves balance, muscle flexibility, joints, range of motion, athletic coordination, and helps the body recover faster. See the difference Maine's Chiropractic can make for you. Maine's Chiropractic Main Street, Homer City, adjusting today for a better tomorrow. Ward Hilliard, what do you have? For the United Lions on the off, United Valley, come on, Ward. Uh, left tackle will be Tavin Shirk. He's a sophomore, 6'2", 290. Tristan Tomlinson, left guard, senior, 6'5", 150. Center's Aiden Villa, a junior, 5'8", 300 pounds. Right guard is Clint Safko. He's a junior, 6'2", 220. Right tackle, Chris Clark. Senior, 6'2", 198. The tight end is going to be Gino DiPaolo. He is a junior, 6'1", 155. One of the wideouts will be Zach Travis, a junior at 6'2", 180. Quarterback, Isaac Washington, a junior, 6'1", 165. The fullback, Caden McCulley. You'll hear that name tonight. A junior, 6'1", 180. And the other running back is Joshua Hessler, a senior at 5'11", 170. For the Wildcats. 
Tight end is going to be Mason Bell. He's the senior, 6'2", 215 pounds. Isaiah Bentz, the left tackle, senior, 6'5", 298. Romula Dokos is the left guard. He's the senior, 6'1", 233. Center, Joe Suciarelli, senior, 6'189". Vinny Tagliati is the right guard, a senior, 5'11", 239. Aiden Bikina, the right tackle, senior, 6'1", 237. Riley Clevenger is the right end, a senior at 5'10", 168. Cole McInerney again back at quarterback, 5'10", senior, 203 pounds. Landon Hill, the main running back. He is a junior, 6'1", 220. Michael Krajosik will be the wide out. He is a senior, 5'11", 183. And we'll also be seeing Brayden Dunn in there. He is a sophomore, 5'9", 161, along with Casey Harper. That's the starting offense for both teams. We're just about ready to get her to go. Starting, starting, lineups. starting lineups brought to you by Maine's Chiropractic, Main Street in Homer City. Tonight's technically the first ever meeting between the Wildcats and the newly formed United Valley Lions. Interestingly enough, the Wildcats never started a season with United, and the two schools met 76 times in their history. And just for openers in 22, the Wildcats are 11 and four in home openers under head coach Greg Page, although Cambria Heights upended the Wildcats last year, 23 to 14, and then bookending the season, the eventual state champions, Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders, who are now double A, will, uh, they handed the Wildcats their first ever playoff loss on this field. So it wasn't the best of home seasons for Homer Center after going 24 and six from 2016 to 2020, including regular season and playoff games. The Cats had a record of just four and four last year. It was a record number of home games, eight home games, including the playoffs. And they had the luxury of six of the 10 regular season games being right here. They lost three of their last four here at the friendly confines, including 28 to nothing to Guilfoyle. So hopefully all of that, I know Coach Page really preached, hey, did you like the way we started the season last year? I don't think you did. And I know you didn't like the way the season ended. So hopefully that kind of eats at the craw if you're a Wildcat fan uh, for Homer Center. And I think for uh, United Valley, they're going to be a lot, of, a lot of excitement, a lot oh, of energy my, coming yeah. out of the gate here. Like I said, those are two proud programs. They go way back. I can remember Black League Valley. They, they were not an easy touch. Homer played them out there one time. I think that's where the longest touchdown pass in school history took place, if I'm not mistaken. And I could be. But <laughs> Chris Jones? To Chris Jones, right. And I, I, I'm not sure if... Uh, Eddie Kalchuk was the guy was. that yeah. chucked it. But uh, anyway, they didn't play a lot. I was surprised when you told me two games. I thought they played them a lot more. But Homer Center hasn't had a losing season since 2011, a streak of 10 straight years. As I mentioned, 8 and 4 last year. One thing I wanted to mention, Ward, in a way, just being close to the Wildcats, it was a little bit of a disjointed camp, to be honest with you. Gene Raymond hasn't been with the team since late summer. He had surgery and some complications. We understand he's doing better, but not back yet. Hasn't been to any practices. They moved Don Mester from junior high full-time to the varsity staff with the linemen. Coach Page had some situations with getting his daughter enrolled at Duquesne, so he missed some time. Mike Arone, the offensive coordinator, has moved on as the head coach of Derry, so it's a different look. A yeah. great addition to the staff, however, is longtime assistant coach for Jerry Page at Laurel Valley down at uh, Blairsville. Uh, might have been at River Valley for a year, I'm not sure. Er More than a year at River, with I mean, uh, with River Valley though. Not with River Valley, with Blairsville for Blairsville. several years. Eric Faust, Eric I'm Faust. speaking of. Not the Eric Faust we know from Coach Rick Faust here many years ago. But he is a great, great football coach, and it's great to have him on board. He goes back to the Laurel Valley days, too. Nick uh, Raymond also gone back. Yeah, I mean, Luke, I, I, my best wishes to Gene. I sure hope to get him back here. He was such a vital cog to this team. I thought he was a real steadying force of being down there. Oh, there's him. no question but, about uh, it. Let's hope he gets back. And uh, everything settles out. We're going to see what this team's made of, Mark. At IRMC at Chestnut Ridge and Blairsville's Urgicare, they can fast track you for quick access to their team of medical experts. Highly trained and ready to treat all minor Ill injuries and illnesses, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge offers the
Derby of United Valley, but uh, I don't know if Homer won or lost the toss because a lot of times they like to defer. We'll see what, what happens here. <laughs> Mason Bell has it teed up for the Homer Center Wildcats. Back deep is Gino DiPaolo and Alex Reba. My goodness, there's a lot of people here. There's a big crowd. It's one of the bigger crowds we've seen yeah, in a long sure time. Is. And quite frankly, I think there's more United Valley people here. I think you're right. I think you're right, Mark. 51 on the roster, and Mason Bell approaches the ball, and the 2022 season is underway and blown dead with potentially an offside on Homer Center's kicking team. I think you're dead on right. We'll, no put our, well, they were offside. They beat the kick. We'll put our statistician to work right away. Jerry Rossi, Jerry waved everybody out there in radio and video land. We'd love to have you on camera, but we don't have it pointed no, I don't at know you. about that. Would, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has a better face for radio, he uh, says. We like appreciate his work, versus, though, don't we? Spy versus spy there in Mad Magazine. Got a little All of that. sides on the Wildcats. <laughs> so that won't make Coach Page happy. No, it won't. And re-kick. You know, any little glitch. You want to start out strong and look like a veteran team that you are. And a lot of times when that doesn't happen, you could be in for a dogfight. So let's see. Braden Dunn, one of the young men, a sophomore on the kicking team, he and Angelo Alexander, in my opinion, were the stars of the scrimmage against Winber. And Mason Bell has it teed up, and here we go again. This one is taken at the 22-yard yeah, line, yeah. and he put his knee down. And then he falls down. That is Gino DiPaolo. Interesting ward, 51 on the United Valley roster. Six seniors, 18 juniors, 11 sophomores, 16 freshmen. The school breakdown, almost dead even. 25 from United, 26 from... Yeah, how's that happen? <laughs> I see we have lost connection. Are you calling, uh, Michael, we're uh, improvising here. Are we uh, on phone line then on the radio? We'll get the radio connection reestablished. First play of the game is a pass, and it's completed from Isaac Worthington to, number 35, Russell, to Saxon. Russell Saxton, not given to us as a starter. Brought down on the play by Casey Harper, gain of five, second down and five. Isaac Worthington. Nice pass by Worthington there, safe one too. Second down and five, and the toss, and Worthington's toss. The give to Joshua Josh Hessler. Hester who rushed for 164 Brandon yards Levenger a year ago. Isaiah Bance on the stop, and they Lost limit him. Yard, uh, actually, it's going to be a loss of a yard. It'll be third down and six. Well played. You know, you hear me all the time talking defensive ends. That's Landon Hill. He came up there, turned that play inside, not only turned it, made the tackle. Great effort on his part. Sec or third down and six. We'll try to... Get reestablished on our main connection when we can on radio. Worthington back to pass, throws it out in the flat. It's dropped by Joshua Hessler, and United is going to go three and out. Good coverage there by Clevenger. He came up real quick on that little flare outside. Actually, the receiver took his eye off the ball and, and saw Andrew bearing down on him, decided not to catch it. So uh, Homer holds. They're going to force a punt here. And that ought to give us some decent field position. And don't forget, you got Michael Kajosik as one of the back receivers here. Number 42, Paula Niedrich back to punt for the Lions. I think we are back on our regular connection on radio. The snap is true, and the kick from Nedrich is away, and it's going to roll inside the 40 down to about the 36-yard line. Sandra Apologize for the issues on, on the... Radio side on that punt, 37 yards and no return. It's a line drive kick, and really, unless you can come up and catch it, and they did not have a chance to do that, it's going to give you a little positive roll. So they got a few extra yards out of that River Valley, did? So River this Valley. <laughs> you know, that's next week. United Valley. We've got a lot of valleys. There's a valley of the death rode the 600. When we were dealing with the, <laughs> or I was with the radio uh, link losing, 
signal. I wanted to mention Isaac Worthington, the quarterback, won the battle over Braden Brown, who ironically now is hurt. Uh, but Worthington played two quarters, was injured against River Valley. That's why you had them on your mind yeah, in the third quarter and lost for this season. Throw out the flat, quick pass, little bubble screen out here to Riley Clevenger. Good yardage out to about the 42-yard line. Number 36, Dylan Stevens. Right to tackle Dylan Stevens for the uh, United or United Valley Lions. Stevens, weak side linebacker. We like Riley Clevenger, even from last year. He just does so many things that he plays with enthusiasm. You gotta love the kid. And the give, and with the football, Landon Hill. And Landon Hill fouls from the 42 to about the 44 yard line. They did the job that time. The other day did, they clogged the hole up, didn't let Landon get started even though he was Tackled by four get people, he managed to get a two. yard. Flint Safko on the tackle. It'll be third down and a two and two. Ball at the 44. They need to get to the 46 yard line. Nine and a half minutes running clock. First possession for Homer Center. Cole hands it off to Hill. Hill, they hit him in the background. He's not going to get there. Forward progress to the 45 yard line. And no give that front wall of the United Lions a lot of credit. One yard gain, it's going to be fourth down and one, and what does Greg Pace do? They're going to send in an extra blocker in Palmer. Looks like they're going to gain about a yard, fourth down and so short. So fourth for down and a yard, line. yard line. for Homer Center. Trying Football favoring the right hash, and they are going to go for it. So you would think, unless they're going to try to draw them. But I think you got to have faith in this veteran line here. Cole McAnally turns, hands it off. Big hole off the left side. First down and more in the United Territory for six yards. Goes Landon Hill. On the tackle for the United Lions, Richard Silvis defensively, Richard strong Silvis safety. The Lions, but the Wildcats, Wildcats first down. trip into United Territory. Want to credit the grounds crew, oh, yes. Ed Sutter, the director of facilities at Homer Center, Mookie Wilson, Greg Garanzi. Field looks excellent, doesn't it? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. First and 10 Homer Center from the shotgun. They reposition Hill from the left of McAnally to the right. He wants to throw. Hill stays in as a protector and throws. too much in love with it. Casey Harper, receiver near boundary, a young man that hasn't played football since the seventh grade. They like him a lot. Give on a jet sweep to Kurjosic, zigging and zagging for some yardage inside the 45, down to the 43. On the tackle, Caden McCauley, strong side linebacker for the United Lions. That might have been one of the few times we saw a positive gain on that thing. Pretty well run that time. Nice blocking up front. Nice turn, cut up field by Mike Kurjosi. Very makeable, I guess they're in two down territory if they've already gone for it once. Still over modulated, I'm told a little bit on the video side. We're gonna continue to take it down and see if we can get it squared away. Third down and four to go. And they give to no one, Matt up the middle, close Matt to a first down, he's definitely the inside the 40. Near the first down, tripped up is Caden by who got in there on the stop. Trayston Tomlinson going to put the football down at the 44 or 39, I should say. They may need to bring the chain to WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Business happens here and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand,
set of down line. Back and Aldi. Be able to first and to and Some great hard line. We'll snap see where on, they snap on the play. put it. Covers it. Since they went to the this time, throwing on the not even falling. They're going to punt. Yep, punting team. Trying to at least stands in the 47 yard line. And rolls inside the there is a 20 point. yard line. Jumped before the. Homer Center. It's a five yard penalty. The penalty is declined. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have immediate timeout after the penalty is declined. 4.57 to play in the first quarter. Okay, We're scoreless. Ball, United the Valley field. will have media the football when we return field. on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the WCCS Wildcat Radio and Digital Network. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well stocked. Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool. Or how about shuffleboard? What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a yeah, brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event away. Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683.
taken on a knee at the 13-yard line, but they don't, now they blow the whistle late. So DePaulo fielded the punt with his right knee on the ground, and United will take over a 32-yard punt. It's the official's first game, too. That's twice they've missed that. They let it go for a couple seconds, and then, whoops, better call that. Yep. The 32-yard uh, punt. 4.50 to play in this scoreless first quarter. Homer looks like the team that's a little confused out there. We need to get settled down here. United with Isaac Worthington, the junior 6'1", 165-pound quarterback. Under center, turns, hands it off. And with the football, I think that's Hessler. Let's see. It is. Hessler, Hessler with the as I mentioned, 164 yards rushing on 100 or uh, 74 rushes last year, 2.2 average. On the tackle, Romulos Dokos. Second down and about six to go, and the pass out in the flat to Evan Thomas short hops him, and it's incomplete. Opening night for everybody as we try to get some of these sound issues straightened away. On the video side, the gremlins are about. Third and long here, Homer Center T needs to make a good solid play. Third down and about six to go. And play action, pressure coming, throwing over the middle, almost intercepted, it is on a deflection. Casey Harper almost picked it off and then makes it down on the deflection. Has the turnover and the Wildcats are in business at the United 29 yard line. Great play by Harper and an off the ball in the air, and an even greater play there by Mason Bell, recognizing that and diving and Wildcats making the catch. So. First and ten from now, the in the old Jerry Page line. days, when they got turnover inside 30 yard line, tight end was used in a delay and was wide open almost every time. <laughs> it's an old play that I love to use. I don't know if Greg's going to use that. It sure worked for his bad. At the 29-yard line, Wildcats with the receiver split near side and Will Jones, but they hand it off to Landon Hill, lowers the shoulder. Hayden McCauley greets him at the 25-yard line. Landon bounces for an extra yard to the 24. McCauley's been in on a couple of tackles. Gain of five for Landon Hill. Nice play by McCauley there. Hill gets around him. He's had a lot of open field. McCauley stood his ground. Nice job. Second down, five to go for the Wildcats. They have an H back in there, but they fake it, and Cole McAnally, big hole up the middle to the 15 to the 10, runs through a tackle and into the end zone for a 24-yard touchdown run. Well, he had five touchdowns rushing last year, and he has his first of the 22 season, and we have the first points of the season. They belong to Homer Center, 6-0 Wildcats, with 3.19 to play in the first quarter. Nice job by Cole there. They all floated out with uh, Landon Hill. He just belly faked and went. Opened up beautifully. Something that Ben Schmidt used to do quite a bit. That's good to see. Homer needs that from him. Michael Krajosik was 9 Krajosik of 10 last year. Point. They didn't kick extra points early on in this season. Long snapper is Dan Jones, a sophomore. The holder, Riley Clevenger. And the snap is put down by Riley, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. Wildcats take advantage of the United turnover on uh, two plays. They drive 29 yards. It took 42 seconds, and they lead it 7 to nothing. and we'll have a Wildcat kickoff when we come back on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night.
Presented also on the digital side on Renda Digital TV by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. Back to Memorial Field in a minute on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Hip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. Recently voted best landscaping company in Drive uh, on a turnover. Went in on two plays. Cole McAnally carried the mill and uh, got into the end zone. Michael Krajosi capped it with the extra point. Homer's up 7 nothing. Maybe they can settle down a little bit now. Seemed to be a little bit uneasy, but it is the first game. Maybe that will help this team. Yeah, you always have new players out there. New center for Homer Center is Joe Succiarelli. They moved Aiden Bikina to the right tackle. Romulos Doko is a new starter on the offensive line. Mason Bell approaches the football, and it's an end-over-end -end kick, and it's taken by DePaulo right at the 15-yard line near the hash. And he has some running room out over the 35 to the 40, and he spins his way up to the 44-yard line for a return of 29 yard yards on the kick coverage team, Zach Rouser, a senior. Good return by Gino DiPaolo, and I love the name, Gino. 44 yard line. Not Bartolini though, huh? <laughs> no. What a good football player he was. They're gonna good put him. Good position here for the United Valley team. Good uh, 30 yard kickoff return. Isaac Worthington, the ball practically in the center of the field, eye formation this time. Fullback is Dylan Ambrose, and he leads the way for Hessler, but nothing going there. The Defensively busting through okay, Isaiah Bentz for the Homer Center Wildcats. Isaiah had a big Mason junior season. Bentz, a young man that's six foot five, 282 pounds. Looks every bit of it, too. <laughs> Big play. Quick check of the out-of-town scoreboard. In the first quarter, Penn's men are 13, purchase line zero. Chris Garitano, public address announcer, relaying a, a score. Penn's men are out in front of purchase line, 13 to nothing. Second down and 11, I formation. Double tights for United, and they give it to the fullback, Ambrose, and he has Ambrose stood up and pushed back. Quickly, but a flag on the play. They have a flag down as well. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is was that Bentz or, yeah, Vinny Taglietti, face mask on Homer Center. Taglietti in on the stop. Face that hurt. They had that hole plugged up pretty good, but again, you, just, you grab for something and it's a face mask. And Five it's yard cost you. variety. Five yard penalty on the play. Rule one, uh, one of the rule changes this year, Ward. Um, Quarterback now can unload the ball the without a receiver uh, yeah. as long as he's outside of the tackle box. I was reading that. Second, Second down, down and, and five, five to go. The, the ball yard. right at midfield. <laughs> and the turn and the get. No, they fake it and the toss. And Hessler's tackled for a loss Hessler in his own backfield. Reading that like he was in the huddle. Landon Hill, who was fourth on the team last year with 44 tackles. They lose those five yards they gained on the face mask penalty, so we're back to even Steven. It's third down and 10. Ball on the left hash favoring the United sideline, wide side of the field to the Homer center bench. And of course, if you're watching on Renda Digital TV, you already know that. Yeah, and that, having those defensive ends play that way, really makes the rest of your defense better. I mean, that, that was just a great play by Landon. 80 seconds left in this first quarter, 7-0 Homer Center. 
Play action pass, pressure coming. Worthington turns, throws, has a receiver. Travis for a first down. And he's tackled by Jackson Arone on the far sideline. Well thrown ball by Isaac Worthington who threw only eight passes last year, completing five for 27 yards. He was injured in the third quarter against River Valley, a significant injury. He did not return. A gain of 18 yards on third and 10. Nice tight spiral there and a good catch on the other end there. That ball was almost stripped by a round, but uh, didn't happen. 37 yard line, the line of scrimmage. And Worthington turns, hands it off. Not a lot of running room, a couple of yards for the Hessler ball carrier. The right it is Joshua Hessler, the 5'11", 170 pound senior on the carry. Isaiah Bentz Isaiah on the tackle the for Homer the Center. The It'll be second down and eight Keenum football two, at the 35. Eight, We're in the, the final minute of this first quarter, seven nothing Homer Center. Running eye formation, and uh, again, I knew that, that Kevin would do something like that. That's a, a more of a power set. Second down eight, eye set again. Double tights, they give to the deep back Hessler. A little hole opened up off the left Hessler side. The Diving in low was Caleb Palmer to make that tackle. A Caleb late Palmer assist for stop. Romulo Stokos. Football put down at the 31 yard line. It'll be third down and about four to go. Looks like a gain of. We're going to run out of clock here. Four 10 the seconds, and they are not in any hurry to run a play. First quarter brought to you by Friends of Jim Struzzi. Re elect Jim Struzzi on election day, paid for by Friends of Jim Struzzi. Homer that Center capitalizes the on an interception. The they score the only points seven. of the game on a 24-yard run by Cole McAnaldi. We've played one. It's Homer Center 7 and the United Valley Lions nothing. You're listening to an IRMC High School Sports Night on WCCS and the Renda Digital TV presentation presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. United with the football and the give to Hessler. Hessler the carry off the left the side, side. going to be close to a first down on the tackle. Vinny Taglietti Palmer for the Homer Taglietti Center Wildcats. For the Wildcats. And Very let's see, they're the eyeing down. it up. Looks like it's going to be a first down to me. Yeah, that will be enough. Homer didn't get any penetration that time, and the Lions, nice, solid, straight ahead blocking, opened the hole, and Hessler, Matthew good, Wildcat. solid runner. 26 yard line. First down. Now we're in four down territory easily here for the Lions. First and 10 at the 26 yard line. Worthington with the tight end to the right. And we have a timeout going to be called by United. Kevin timeout Marabito points. didn't like what he saw. So with the 11.25 remaining in the first half, it's Homer Center 7, United Valley on the march, looking for their first score of the game on an Indiana Regional Medical Center and Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club High School Sports Night on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. 
The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. Back with you at Memorial Field. Steamy night. Yeah, no air moving now, huh? Rain missed us. Yes, thankfully. First and 10 for United out of the timeout. High formation. Looks like McCauley's the fullback now. Evan Thomas, receiver to the near boundary. And Zach Worthington hands it off to Hessler, bouncing it and just ducks Hessler's his way to the 25-yard right line for a gain of a couple. On the tackle for Homer Center, Romulo Stokos. Romulo Stokos in on the stop for the Wildcats, gain of two. Stokos first here playing inside backer uh, on a consistent basis and playing pretty well here tonight. Yeah, he's been in on a few tackles here early on. His mate back there, well, Mason Bell, has had multiple years of experience. Portage has jumped out in front of River Valley, 14 to nothing. Yeah. River Valley will be here next Friday night, 6.15 airtime on Renda Digital TV, presented by the Grayson Coral Sportsman's Club and on WCCS, 36th consecutive year. Little flip pass to the slot man, Cade McCauley, and McCauley. he has five yards to the 20. It'll set up third down and short. Vinny Taglietti. Recovered Tag to make that tackle, the but the ball just inside the 20-yard line. Nice safe place. You know, nice safe play, I should say. Just a quick out to the flat. At the 19 -yard this line tackle the gives him about four yards. Seven-nothing Homer Center United in the red zone, however, and they send a receiver Gino DiPaolo to the wide side in front of their own bench. Evan Thomas near side, straight eye formation behind Isaac Worthington. And Isaac toss left and busting through and tripping up the ball the carriers, carrier Caleb Palmer, who came Caleb through Palmer to make that tackle as we move inside the 10 minute mark. United's gonna be faced with fourth down and about two and a half to go. Nice play again, that's off the end. The DNs can make such a difference. They can stop those pitches. Big play here for United Valley. Well, it's going to stumble all over that for a while. Yeah, well, it's not as bad as <laughs> Blairsville Salzburg going to River Valley. Yeah, so we yeah. We're in the same neighborhood, even if we say United, right? Yeah. Well, we have three receivers <laughs> in the pattern. Dubs to the right. I formation, and Worthington drops the football, and United's going to turn what it over. Doesn't snap. really matter who recovered it because it was recovered at about Wildcats the 20-yard line. Downs. First down, Wildcats. So the Wildcats hold off United. Those are the little things we talked about. You know, you'd avoid that if, if you're United Valley simply because it gives the momentum back to the Wildcats. They don't need that. And uh, unfortunately, that was a break for Homer. Let's see if they can get their offense going now. So the Wildcats will start with 9.08 to play here in the half at their own 19 yard line. Joe Suchirelli, senior center. As a matter of fact, the entire offensive line, they're all seniors. From the gun. Cole hands it off to Michael Krajosik, who's in the backfield, and Michael. That was done. Or was it Braden Dunn? I'm sorry, Braden 34, the, not 24. Carry for the Wildcats. Talented uh, sophomore running back who did some good things in the scrimmage, including going up in traffic like for a Thomas touchdown pass on a line. catch and Game run three, on the final seven, play of the scrimmage. Gain of three for Braden, he rushed 12 times for 71 yards last year, 5.9 average. He's a 5'9", 161-pounder. He lines up to the right of Cole McAnaldi, and they give it to Braden again. Good vision, makes a couple of quick moves to the 30 and has a first down to the 31-yard line. 
tackle on the play by Rich Silvish of the United Valley Lions. Showed some moves there, didn't he, Ward? Yes, he did. I'm just going to say that. He's not big, but he can he can jitterbug with the best of them back there, and he did a nice job picking that first down up. I missed the inner squad scrimmage this year, but I was told by assistant coach Eric Faust that he had a just an absolutely terrific run, and it was the vision that opened things up for him. I guess he made a really spectacular cut. First and 10 Wildcats at their own 31. Cole takes the snap from Suchirelli. Good protection, going to throw deep downfield, and it's into traffic and incomplete. Stride for stride with Casey Harper was the weak side cornerback, Colin Nedrich. Three deep receivers on that. Nobody in the middle that wide open. Once you take his defenders with you, that middle opens up. Homer had no one in there, though, so that was all streak. Sometimes they'll throw that deep ball to loosen things, something up underneath. That could be. Let's see. Four receivers, twins right and left, and McAnulty takes the snap, looking to set up a screen, and he has it to Braden Dunn to the 35, and he's dragged down behind from behind magnificently by Caden McCauley. Nice if not for McCauley, that McCauley is going play. for even bigger yardage. As it is, it that gains about six, about six yards. yards. It sets four. up third down and four. The Wildcats at their own Ball 37. The he came from the right side there. Homer had three blockers waiting for that ball to be completed. As soon as it was, McCauley was able to split them and make the play. Or that's gone for easy 10, 20 yards. Cambria Heights out in front, 14 to six. Who are they playing? I can't remember. We'll have to look it up. Miller's in Cambria. It's in the ball, okay, yep. Cole ball. There's Cole on the read option and he's in the loose at the 45, the 40, and he's tackled Nine from behind at about the 33 yard line. About 30 yards for Cole McAnally, Colin Nedrich on the tackle for the United Valley Lions. Yeah, interesting little sequence there. They took Dunn out, they put Landon Hill back in the ball game. Right away, the United defense reacts to that. And Cole, nice job of faking and reading. Official wants to bring him out here for helmet adjustment, perhaps. 32 yards on the carry by McAnally. Where they put the First football down at, at the 32 yard line. line. Thirty-one yard run officially. And they're gonna to attend to Cole. One of the stars of the scrimmage was sophomore Angelo Alexander, but he suffered a concussion on a helmet to helmet hit near sideline that we spotted up in the upper level of the press box as I was viewing the scrimmage. And now the third string quarterback is Riley Clevenger. Word after the scrimmage, Riley took some snaps in the scrimmage. He threw one pass and completed it. And I kiddingly said to him, I think there's a quarterback controversy. <laughs> He's a confident <laughs> young man. Yeah, he is. And, and, uh, I think he could do all right here. They keep it simple for him. First and 10 from the 32, and he hands it off. That's simple. And Hill with, with the, the football, carry. Landon Hill. Landon is dragged down by Clint Sapko, the 6'2", 220-pound junior tackle, so it'll be second down and eight. Six and a half minutes remaining in this second quarter, 7 nothing. Homer Center, United Valley hanging right in there. Yeah, and, it, and uh, the line needs to pick it up a little. they got to help out since you've got your third string quarterback there. Landon Hill to the right of that third string quarterback, Riley Clevenger, and Read option, he's gonna keep it, and Riley is stood up and fights for yardage and gonna go down Clevenger inside the 30 the right at about the 28 yard line. So he'll gain two or three depending on the spot as we turn inside of six minutes. His second quarter being brought to you by Rural Health of Pennsylvania. Short game of the play. Third down and six. Third down and six. So let's see what line. head coach Greg Page does. An adjustment for the coach, too, without Mike Arone yeah. next to him. Yeah, it, 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 as you were going through that, I said, yeah, that's, that's a lot of change. And a lot of people to fill gaps. And, uh, and they have had fabulous continuity through the years. Yes, they have. From the shotgun, it's Riley Clevenger. Twin receivers up top. 
And Riley hands it off to Hill. Hill dances through an opening, has a first down inside the 20 yard line. He's gonna take it down to about the 16 yard line where safety Isaac Worthington tackled him at the 16 yard line. That's a gain of 12. And I think that's what Homer Center is going to do, just yeah, lean on Landon. That's why I'm saying the line needs to pick it up. They give him a bit of a gap. He gets into the secondary. There's five plus yards every time, and uh, you saw it right there. Five minutes Bogey remaining here in the quarter. Empty backfield for Riley Clevenger. They have Mason Bell split to the left from his tight end position. They're going to give on a jet swing, zigging to the 10, to the 5, and he dances into the end zone for a spectacular touchdown run of 16 yards for Michael Perichosik. Two, and it's nothing. The killer quarterback, Riley <laughs> Clevenger, who just engineered that touch. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Our spotter, everything even on the sideline, he said Cole McAnaldi got his helmet back, so evidently he will be okay. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night coverage continues from Memorial Field and on Arenda Digital TV. Thank you to the Twin Cities of N Hall and the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. It's 14 to nothing Homer Center over United Valley on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Business happens here and here and here. At first, Commonwealth. We believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs the ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The great Little onside kick attempt, and he tries following it to uh, retrieve it himself. But I think United came up with it. Heads up play by United, Hunter McGinnis. Yeah, last year they had three guys approach that ball and didn't know who was going to kick it. But this year, exclusively Mason. We have a media timeout on the field with 4.42 to play in the first half. It's Homer Center 14 and the United Valley Lions nothing. You're listening and watching on the Homer Center Wildcat WCCS Football Network. When your vehicle needs tended to, take it to Baroni's Auto Care. Baroni's Auto Care inspects, does minor repairs including brakes and exhausts, as well as oil changes and tune-ups. And if you're looking for tires, Baroni's Auto Care sells all brands. Baroni's Auto Care is currently accepting new customers. So when your vehicle needs inspected or repaired, take it to Baroni's Auto Care right off Route 56. Look for the sign in Brush Valley. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, hip, 
Jeff and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. Recently voted best. Memorial Field, outstanding crowd on hand here. I haven't seen that many people on the hillside where I used to sit as a little guy when Bill Holmes from Coral would bring me to games in a long, <laughs> long time. Uh, there used to be a hole under that fence over there. I got to admit, once in a while, I might slither under it. Worthington with the jersey out, the quarterback under center, Aiden Villa. Single setback is Hessler, and they give it to Hessler, and Hessler's sorry they did, although good effort. Look at him keeping those legs moving, so with he takes and with drags Wildcat defenders. Ward, he was hit right at the line of scrimmage, yeah. and he ends up with six yards. Yeah, that was a good effort on his part. Never quit. Never heard a whistle. You play to the whistle. That's what he did. The front wall, Aiden Bikina, Vitti Taglietti, and Isaiah Bentz met Hessler. I'm not sure who he uh, ran roughshod on, but it, there were a couple of black jerseys he took for a ride right to midfield. P pushed him uh, back. Under four minutes to go, United would love to get on the board. They give it to Hessler this time. Isaiah Bentz meets him right at midfield and spins him down at the Homer Center 49 yard line. On the stop for the Wildcats. No gain in the play, third down. As I mentioned, Bentz on the tackle. He's been in on a few. He started the season very strong, but finished eighth overall with 30 tackles a year ago. Third down and a long three for United. With 3.20, clock moving that new scoreboard in the south end zone. Coming up at halftime, I'll tell you about our special interview and there's a bad snap, snap fumbled on is the fumbled out. Greg Page says Homer Center has it. Let's wait and see. And it's going to be United football back at midfield. So let's see what Kevin Marabito does. When we recap the first half on radio, on the video side, we have an interview with four members of the Laurel Valley class of 61. They are celebrating the 61st reunion of the class of 61. And they have some activities, many of them visiting the Flight 93 Memorial. They're going to have dinner tomorrow at Haas's. They're uh, in the south end zone, a good many of them. About 45 or so have passed away, but uh, many are here for the reunion. They are going to punt. Nedrich off the side of his foot, shanks it into the United bench at the 40, and Homer Center's going to take over. Kind of summarize that in the uh, keys of the game that they cannot afford breakdowns. They've had two fumbles on the exchange and now that kick. Uh, those are the kind of things that cost you when you're a young team you're trying to get established. Nine yard punt and the Wildcats with 217 and three timeouts remaining will have the ball back at their own 41. That class of 61 because we won't have the interview on radio. It'll be a video interview on uh, Renda Digital TV. They had 128 members and 128 graduates. The first two years of their high school careers were spent in the borough at what is now in Tom Park at the old Homer City High School. And they moved up to the new one in 1960. Riley Clevenger still at quarterback, toss right. And Landon Hill, Landon Hill takes the toss has the right three side. yards to the 44-yard line. Short gain on the play. Clint Safko on the tackle for the United Lions. Safko in on the stop for the Lions. Casey Harper in. Keating Two minutes to play seven, here seven. in the first half. It's 14-0 Homer Center. They're going to leave Cole Mack and Aldi on the sideline for now, and I think that's a good move. Second down, seven to go for Homer Center from their own 44. And... Read option. Clevenger wants to keep it, but the United snuffs it out. Safco again, along with Clevenger the, keeps the ball over the left United side. Lions, Trayston Tomlinson, who's in there. Safco no gain. It'll be third Lions down, no seven to go with 90 down, seconds running clock four four here in the line. first half. Homer Center leads 14 to nothing.
And the ball is loose, and Clevenger dives on it. They wanted to get it into the hands of Landon Hill, but uh, that play was not pretty from the start. No, it's not a good exchange there. Uh, maybe a little too quick with it. So uh, it'll be in the backfield to help recover that. a loss from the 44 back to the 38 yard line. A get, loss of six. Play. Fourth down and 13 at the 44. And United with line. only, well, with two timeouts remaining, they're not going to stop the clock. And Homer Center is going to wind it down and they're maybe take a timeout. Really 10 it's on the play clock. And that's what they're going to do. Two seconds, one second on the play clock. Timeout called with 25 seconds to play. We'll take a quick timeout as well on an Indiana Regional Medical timeout Center timeout High School pass. Sports Night on Renda Digital TV presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. It's 14 to nothing, Homer Center. Wildcats will punt it away when we return on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sales. Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Johnston Nursery Landscaping. Check them out on Facebook. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. A good exchange. Jones waiting and snaps it, and Krajosic, little rugby style punt, gets a good one away. And Silvis comes up and fumbles the football at the 30, but dives on it back Krajosic at the 27 yard line with 16 Fumbled seconds remaining. Silvis yeah, on the punt, 29. 29 yards. 29 yards on the punt for Nice Krajosic. job here. Michael got clear of the, the, the traffic, the able to get a good foot into it. Line. Case there of running before you catch it. Punt returning is an art. <laughs> you got to catch the ball first, though. That is the, the trick. So let's see what United does here. They might have Worthington just take a knee. He's in the shotgun and he's looking to pass and it's deflected his pass intended out in the flat for Dylan Ambrose but was deflected maybe for Ambrose. was that Palmer Denny or Mason Bell that deflected it we're looking I think it was Palmer second down and 10 Palmer's on that side anyhow so second down and 10 with 13.3 seconds remaining And Worthington's going to pass again. A little out pattern is hauled in by Aiden Stippler, to the near side. a sophomore out of United. Aiden Stippler on the catch. And just for the fans who are wondering why I said out Aiden of United, four, it's because 26 players are from Black Lake Valley and 25 are from United. Forming United Valley. Yep, Stippler's a, a United name. Hello to Homer City Area Athletic Booster President. At Booster Club, Adam Marshall. Ceremony tomorrow, Ward will want to talk about in a second. Out pattern, this Where one again to Ambrose to, to about the 35-yard line with only 4.8 on seconds. Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was formed Eight in 1958 for midget football. And, and tomorrow, very appropriate, posthumously, Dennis Mester will be inducted line. as a, or Dennis Mester, Dennis Buddy, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, as a lifetime member. Posthumously wouldn't be good with Dennis standing here, Mester I'm speaking of. But Ter Terry Buggy just told me her husband, Denny, loved the Booster Club. Absolutely loved it. He loved football. Timeout, you know from being around so long as there's a timeout called by United, the job he did coaching football, chairing football, long overdue. Uh, there will be a presentation at 6.30 approximately between games tomorrow. The Homer City Bears midget team back home against Blairsville, I believe. And uh, the 
young guys will play around 4 o'clock and the older team at, um, or actually 5 o'clock, and then the older team at 7 o'clock. Older team won against Indiana 42 points last Saturday night. Younger guys lost a tough one. Also, Mark Meckling will be formally inducted. They were both acknowledged at the State Junior Legion Tournament, but uh, Mark was on vacation, and Terry, quite frankly, we thought it was more appropriate to honor her late husband, Denny Buggy, at a football game, and that's what we're going to do tomorrow night. Yeah, that, that's nice. Uh, yeah, he did so many things, and so many things well. Always nice to be around. Tesla Great guy. Deep to kick for the Lions. Fourth down and one, I formation. Isaac Worthington takes the snap, hands it off to Hessler. Hessler gets a little sill block Hessler and has some pretty good running room the up side. over the 45 so to the 46 the yard line where he's tackled Taglietti, by Taglietti Dokos, and Hill Romy Dokos. The and the first that half the has come half to an end. I'd like to tell you, Over coming up Wildcats at halftime on the radio side, we'll come back zero. on the other side of this break and recap the first half. And on Renda Digital TV, you'll see an interview that I conducted with four members of the Laura Lamar class of 1961. We will have that as we kick off our ITT halftime show. Our score at the half, it's Homer Center 14 and the United Valley Lions nothing. And you're listening and watching it on an IRMC High School Sports Night presented by IRMC and the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club right here on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all our student athletes and their families every success on the gridiron. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for our students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. These have been challenging times, and I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. I liked the one with a stained glass ship in the front door. You liked the one with the two-car garage. But then we found it, the one. It had a porch swing, a yard for our dog, a room for your office. Sure, it was 95 years old, but when we met with Amy at S&T Bank, she mentioned they had been around for over 115 years, and that made me feel better. Because even if we won't be here in 115 years, maybe our grandkids will be. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now, and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Plus, at Luther Ford, you'll save big during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. 
The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. Hi, everybody. Mark Burdick back with you at Memorial Field as the Wildcats open up the 2022 campaign against the United Valley Lions. And I have four very special guests joining us on Renda Digital TV this evening. Members of the Class of 61, the Class of 61 from Laura Lamar High School, as it was known. They are celebrating their 61st reunion. And guys, good to have you joining me. I have Sam Marone to my immediate right. Many folks in town know Sam, of course, his two sons, so instrumental in the Wildcats. Cat success through the years. Mike now has taken over the Dairy Trojans program. Tony Arone, the defensive coordinator. A famous Homer Center sports name, Mike Duffalo, joining us. On to my left, we have Len Myers and Jerome Space. Sam, I'm going to start with you because I know you were one of the guys that put the 61st reunion together. Uh, talk to us about the class of 61. How many graduates were there? There was approximately 128 graduates back in 61. Uh, since that time, we have lost about 45, 46 members. Uh, tonight, uh, we're expecting about 26 to be here at the game. And Saturday evening, uh, we expect about 46 members and our guests to be up at Hosses for a dinner and, and some conversation. All right, I'm sure there will be a lot of memories discussed. And as always, we remember those that have gone before us. You said about 45 or 50 members or so have passed, and I'm sure you have fond memories of many classmates. Mike Duffalo, you graduated from the building that this interview is being uh, conducted in, but you did not start your uh, high school careers as a student in this building, did you? You were down in the borough. My uh, high school career was uh, two years down in the borough and two years in the brand new uh, Hummer Center uh, school here, yes. Talk about your fondest memories. My fondest memories, uh, and we're excited to be here at Memorial Field tonight. Uh, playing football was a, a big part of uh, my uh, interest at the time, and of course, uh, we all went on to, uh, some of us went on to college and uh, various things, but we're just excited to be back with uh, one another here at Memorial Field tonight. Now, Len, all these years later, 61 years later, you were undefeated, right? You shut everybody out, too. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Our record was 6 2 1. Uh, who did we tie? I don't remember that. Ford, Ford, Ford City. Ford City. Ford yeah. City tied us in the last couple seconds of the game. Yep. All right. And uh, we scrimmaged Indiana. And I thought we did pretty darn well. They hit hard, we hit hard back, believe me. We really hit hard back. The other one was uh, Wimber. I remember Ooh. scrimmaging Wimber. Oh, yeah. And uh, we did well against them, too. But that was our practice to get ready for our, our uh, record at 6 2 1. Jerome, you. well, thank you, Len. Jerome, uh, they call you. Uh, Jerry up in Erie, right, where you li right. now live. But it's Jerome down here That's in Homer right. City. What about your memories uh, oh, back here? Great time. T togetherness. That's the key. We all hung in there. You know, tight. You know, back then, you, some of the schools you mentioned, scrimmaging Indiana and, you know, of course, Winber, all the schools were so much bigger back then. But uh, Homer Center through the years, and Coach Page has done this uh, too, even in modern times, that uh, you, you try to play the best competition you can. Larger schools, I know Ron Coleman in the uh, late 60s and 70s played some very large schools. And Homer City, Laura Lamar, and Homer Center never ducked away from larger schools. Amen. All right. Never will. So what about the weekend? Len, uh, what are you looking forward to the most? Well, I don't know if I'm going to make the game tomorrow. I know my wife has plans, uh, but I do plan to go to the uh, dinner at Hosses, enjoy my classmates to talk, you and know, uh, go back and remember a lot of things that we did together. Before I turn back to my right, anything uh, else you want to pass along as far as memories and coming back all these years later? Well, I remember playing football, and I remember Coach Cattulli asking me, I, I mentioned this before, uh, it was a halftime, and he said, how do you like playing football? I said, boy, is it fun. I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed being on the track team, too. You know, the, uh, the camaraderie of uh, all of our teammates it was great, and I think about it all the time. Jerome, what, what about yourself? I have nothing else. Mike will tell you about Jim Nance. 
Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. We'll go, Mike. Uh, what about Jim Nance? Well, I I think Jim Nance is a name that everybody remembers in local football. But uh, one of the things we did was scrimmage Indiana every year, and uh, Jerome Space and I uh, made sure that we tackled them, and uh, we tackled them in the backfield one time, double teamed them and uh, put him down, so that's our claim to fame these years later. <laughs> after he had a, a you know, collegiate uh, NFL career. What about uh, meeting uh, the present-day Wildcats? I know you had dinner with them Thursday night in the cafeteria. We're excited uh, for this team. Uh, they have a lot of seniors back, uh, the coaching and everything else that goes with it. Uh, Hummer Center has always had a winning tradition, and I think this year – it's going to be something special. A lot of pressure on the coach who's watching this interview, <laughs> right, Sam? I mean, he got it. Uh, one, one comment about Len Myers here when he said that the coach took him aside and asked him how he played, how he liked football. Len didn't come out until he was a senior, along with another uh, kid, uh, Rich Canyon. And both of these guys were huge. They had hands that looked like baseball gloves. They played defense side by side, and anybody that ran the middle never got a yard. <laughs> they had these big mitts that went out that stretched six, seven feet, and they, they, were, they were phenomenal on the defense. Well, guys, we thank you for doing this. We hope you have a blast on the 61st reunion of the Class of 61. We thank Jerome Space and Len Myers, Mike Duffalo, Sam Marone for joining us. Guys, have a great weekend, okay? Yeah. And let's go Thank Wildcats. Let's get a win tonight, go okay? Wildcats. Thank you. Go Wildcats. All right, 10 and 0. There's the coach watching. <laughs> All right, with the class of 61. And uh, there's the coaches in the background in the peanut gallery saying they're worse than I am, putting pressure on the old coach. <laughs> Mark Berg reporting with the class of 61 right here on Renda Digital TV. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well stocked. Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool. Or how about shuffleboard? What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. I'm Shannon Lipniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. Hilliard, Mark Burdick, back in our S&T Bank broadcast booth, Relationship Banking, one customer at a time. That's S&T Bank member FDIC, Homer Center Marching Band, performing with all of their props here on the well-groomed memorial-filled turf. 
kudos to Ed Sutter, Mookie Wilson, Greg Garanzi, and all the guys yeah. for making it look so good. What about the stats? How do they look? Good for both sides? Yeah, Warner, not, not a so whole much. lot. Not a whole lot. 14 Four. nothing, by the way, Homer Center yeah. over United, United Valley. Valley had Josh Hessler run 12 times. He had 28 yards, and Dylan Ambrose had one carry for one yard. Their total 13 totes, 22 yards uh, through the air. Worthington was 5 of 9 for 37 and a, an interception. Very well played interception by the Wildcats. That was for 37, if I didn't say that. 22 offensive plays, just 59 yards for United Valley. Homer Center had uh, Logan Hill rush eight times for 41 yards. Cole McAnoldy, three rushes, 61 yards, and a 30-yard touchdown in there. Brayden Dunn, two carries for 12. Michael Krajersi, two carries, 21 yards, and a touchdown. And Clevenger, Andrew, two carries, two yards. Homer had 17 rushing attempts, 131 yards. Through the year, McAnoldy, two of five for 12. They had 131 on the ground, 12 through the year. 22 offensive plays, 143 yards. Really not an offensive showcase in either case. Thanks to Mr. Ross Iboy. He's a lifesaver. What were the uh, total total numbers Ward? I was talking to our digital producer, John Smathers. 59 total offensive yards for United Valley, 143 for Homer Center. Both the homers drives are a shorter variety, too, so they haven't put together one of those patented and length of field drives that we're so familiar with. They got four xylophones down there. <laughs> Just a lot of, lot of stuff <laughs> comes off the truck. Some fans don't even have a xylophone. We had four. There you have it. All right, when we come back, we're going to give you the out-of-town scores as we take a trip around the Heritage Conference and also take a peek into the WPIAL. We peek at the scoreboard here on our halftime report sponsored by Indiana Total Therapy. It says Homer Center 14 and the United Valley Lions nothing. Touchdown run from Cole McAnulty and a second from Michael Krajosik, the difference in the game, but still plenty of game action remaining. United Valley's played pretty well. We'll see how things unfold in the second half. 14-0 Homer Center on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. I'm Shannon Lutniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. Hi, my name is Billy, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith bus. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new drivers. That's right, Billy. Smith Bus Company is hiring. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce.
Palmer Center with the lead as we get ready for the second half. Since 2009, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville has been there for you and your family. With convenient access, Urgent Care is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. with seamless access to the main IRMC campus. IRMC in Indiana. Count on IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, Old Route 22 in Blairsville. Enough with the waiting game. Get in, get out, get better. A part of the IRMC family, better health, better life. Ward, I'll give you the Heritage Conference scoreboard as we take a trip around the Heritage Conference. By the way, our Jake Slobotnik will be calling River Valley all season long. So good to have him back with us. And we came up with this feature that he's going to do on our pregame show every week. It's called a trip around the Heritage Conference as he will tee things up. So we have some scores as we take you uh, through very quickly. We'll try to do this in a minute and then go to break. I will give you the score. You give me a snapshot reaction. Halftime, West Shemokin 26, 26, Marion Center 7. Yeah, they got uh, the, the brother back, <laughs> quarterback. He didn't, uh, Marion Center has thin numbers, Mark, so they're going to have a rough year, I think. At the half, Portage 27, River Valley nothing. Uh, that's a bit of a surprise. I didn't know what River Valley had coming back. Apparently, they're not real strong defensively, and Portage is. They love to get into this conference, Portage does. Um, let's see here. At the half, this is backwards. Penn's Manor, 25. Purchase line, nothing. Yep. Billy Packer got them together. You don't think you're going to have another bad year. And they got Max Hill as a quarterback, probably the best QB in the league right now. And uh, he alone can help that team. Halftime, Cambria Heights, 14. Northern Cambria, 14. Isn't that what they used to call the Coal Bowl? That's the Coal Bowl, and they're having a battle there. Northern Cambria has a good bunch back. They're going to be a tough opponent. WPIAL, new coach, Brad Wright, I think is his name, at Indiana. That's not right? I thought it was Brad Wright. Wright's right. Wright's right. right. The w. Wright's right, isn't it? Brad, Brad Wright's right. right. Brad, Brad, Brad like Wright's a bunch right. Of birds here. Brad Wright's right, not right. <laughs> Brad Wright, Brad Wright. Freeport, 15. Brad Wright's Little Indian, 6. Well, I, I don't know how to call I don't know that much about the Indians and what they had coming back, but I, I think Freeport's a game that uh, they were looking to win. I think so. that's the Freeport up in the Butler area, not Nassau in the Bahamas. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> uh, we do not have a Ligonier score. Jerry is letting us down. Our statistician in the booth is Jerry Rossi. He's keeping scores. All the ADs, I'm on the thread that uh, all the ADs exchange scores too. Our executive radio producer is Michael Burdig. Our digital producer, does he have executive in front of his name, is John Smathers. He's doing a great job. Look at all this equipment here. Our spotter in the I booth. I tell people about this. Dennis Mester. <laughs> With Ward Hilliard, I'm Mark Burdick. As we wrap up the ITT halftime report, we're coming back with the start of the second half. United will kick off to Homer Center. It's the Wildcats 14 and the United Valley Lions nothing. We'll be back here next Friday. Same type of fun, fans, at 6.15 <laughs> on Renda Digital TV and also on the radio. By the way, before we go to break, Again, spread the word, Renda Digital TV, to find it. All you have to do is go to the YouTube channel and search Renda Digital TV. We're going to be have, we're going to be storing everything there. Indiana games, Homer Center games, special features. It's new this year, Renda Digital TV. You can also find it on uh, the website at wccsradio.com. And our video streams are presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and the Twin Cities Event Hall. We shot some footage down there the other day. If you're watching the game, you're seeing some of those ads. And I've been asked to announce that the official, the official Wildcats win party will be immediately following the game at the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. Now I'm not sure if announcers and uh, spotters <laughs> are welcome, but it is happening. The official Wildcats win party at the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. Thank you, Tony, Dave Delafura, Sticky Lawson, for your fabulous support. You guys got it all going on down there, and I'm glad to be a member now. And my father, Gus, we miss him dearly. He was a charter member. There's a plaque down there, and it was just fun actually seeing Gus's name yeah, that's going great. way back. That's so, great. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you know, for your support. Isn't that something how the community's all, all this stuff is coming in for the community? Coming terrific. back with the kickoff right after this 14 0 Homer Center over United Valley on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The 
the Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. For the second half of action, and as you just heard, the third quarter being presented by in first bank. Back deep for Homer Center, Braden Dunn and Michael Krajosik. Ward, if we could pull you away from the pizza, we are <laughs> set for action. I never got back to it. Look like oh, a bunch of lions pass. around a kill Second back there. Joseph, the people in this booth. Again, we will. I will be involved. I think you have another commitment, but lifetime member ceremony at about 6:30 tomorrow. Dennis Buggy posthumously inducted as a lifetime member of the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club, along with Mark Meckling. Should be a lot of fun. Number 36, Dylan. A lot Sanders. of life members. A lot of life members. Several of which have passed, which is sad, but uh, that's what made up this organization, the Boosters. And a lot of these kids are products of that. Hopefully, a lot of current lifetime members will be there tomorrow. And coming up to take that kick beautifully on the run is Brayton Dunn into the second area of the 40-45. I like the way this kid runs the football. He has outstanding vision, and he takes it at the uh, to the 48-yard line. A return of about 23 yards. Skylar Haup on the tackle. Jerry, was that 23? First and 10 ball at the 48-yard line. 25 yards on the return. I thought he took it at the 25, but it yeah. might have been the 20. It was a good instinct, so he knew he had a chance to catch it on the line. I kept his momentum going as he caught the ball, so he was going full tilt once he caught it. And one miss, and he's gone. Great play. Bad news for Homer Center. Cole McEnald, he's not in the game, and they give it to Hill. Hill running room near side to the 45, to the 40. Gets a block from Kajosic to the 30, to the 25, where he's banged out of bounds after a 27-yard gain by Landon Hill. Forced out of bounds by Colin Nedrich of the United Valley Lions. 27 yards on the game, first play of the second half. Kind of what you're used to when you see Landon Hill run. We saw a lot of that last year, and he, he starts to get loosened up here in the second half. He can have a big game. Riley Clevenger, low snap, handles it nice, gives to Hill. Hill gets a nice block, and a flag comes in. It's going to be a block in the back, unfortunately, for Homer right Center side. that's going to negate a good gain. For Hill, 68 Four yards prior Hill. to that play, and that play is going to be wiped off anyway. They're going to call it a hold Holding on Homer out. Center, and it was pretty clear to me as I peered out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth, relationship banking one customer at a time. He said hello when he came to the top of the steps in his – Normal position here at the top of the bleachers, Len Black and his wife, Carol. Good to see those yeah, guys. Yeah, they're fixtures Again. on. Hey, we have a little guy down below us. How are we doing down there? The foul. Hello. His name's Lucas. Lucas. Okay, Lucas. How are you doing, buddy? We uh, lean out of the booth. I hope I don't fall out. First down. In <laughs> First down. down. <laughs> Deep trouble. 13. <laughs> it's a long way down there. You wouldn't get through there. Clevenger <laughs> to Landon Hill. And Safco is another flag comes in. I think we're going to have another hold on Homer Center unless there was a grab of the face mask. And that's what we do have is a face mask penalty. Personal foul variety, too, so it was a pretty good tug. Face mask on the Lions. So that will advance the football. Coach Page is not happy with something down there. You can see how animated he is yelling out on the field to Clevenger. So they're going to march the football inside the 15. 15 yards from the end of the run. And that down to the 13-yard line. First and 10 from the line, 12-yard line. From the shotgun, Riley Clevenger, and he hands it off to Hill. No, he doesn't. He keeps it, and Clev is inside the 10, backs his way down close Clevenger to the six-yard line. The Good effort by Riley Clevenger. Nice gain on the play, gain of about Opening eight. minute of this second half. 
on the tackle for the United Lions was Tristan Tomlinson. Tristan Tomlinson in on the stop for the Lions. Yeah, he doesn't lack for confidence, does he? He's thrown five, into this position here. Yard line, seven yard line. Receiver to the left boundaries, the sophomore, Braden Dunn. Read option, they give to Hill. Hill lowers the shoulder down toward the goal line. Did he get in or not? No signal yet no, from the, the official. The Gonna be line. inside the one yard line evidently, but it will be first and goal He'll for Homer Center. Just short, but that is enough yardage for first down. All this springboarded off of a nice return by Braden Dunn. First and goal Homer just Pats picked up, Landon Hill did his thing, and here they are at the one yard line. Riley Clevenger waiting the shotgun snap from Sucharelli, he hands it off to Hill, he's into the get end zone easily, and the Wildcats have jumped out in front now, 20 to nothing. Landon Hill on the board for the first time this season, and Homer Center, as Ward mentioned, set up by the nice kickoff return from Braden Dunn. They march at 52, to yard, 52 yards, and they've now opened it up to a 20 to nothing lead. Center Joe Cicciarelli, right tackle, right guard, Vinny Taglietti, and Aiden Bikina. Nice job of blocking that right side. They were predominantly running over those guys. Dan Jones, the long snapper, holder is Riley Clevenger. See some heat lightning in the background of the south end zone. Krajosic, right-footed soccer style kicker, doesn't get this one. I'm not sure if uh, Riley Krajosic hung on to the ball or not, but uh, maybe the snap came in low, but it doesn't, uh, they don't convert. Let's put it that way. Score holds 20 to nothing, Homer Center over the United Valley Lions. But a nice looking drive to open up the second half for Homer Center. It's Homer Center 20, and the United Valley Lions nothing on an IRMC High School Sports Night and digital TV. Presented by the Grayson Coral Sportsman's Club on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Plus, at Luther Ford, you'll save big during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season because we care about care. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the um, Listeners on Cat Country 106.3 to our broadcast will tell you why Cat Country is simulcasting our game in a moment. Kick from Hill, rolls inside the 15, picked up at the 10 yard line. And let's see who has that football. Gino DiPaolo tackled inside the 20 at about the 18 yard line. And on the kick coverage team for the Homer Center Wildcats was Will Jones. Nice Cat Country covering our game or simulcasting with us right now. Lightning has caused a delay at Ernie Widmar yeah, Field in Blairsville. So that game between River Valley and Portage is in a delay due to lightning. I had just mentioned lightning in the south, uh, beyond the south end zone. So we welcome Cat Country listeners and we will get you back to River Valley Portage football as soon as they resume action. Here it's 20 to nothing Homer Center at the line of scrimmage, Ward. Yeah. <laughs> that DN can do for you. 402, 401, four minutes remaining here in the third quarter. 20 to nothing, Homer Center. In on that middle to that. So it'll be fourth down and five to go. Thank 
going a Acknowledge Da Vinci Robotic and back at the
four yards. Nothing over center. Lion in a region of high school night on DC Network. Business happens here. face to face and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. The Twin Cities Event Hall is a perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is into the back of uh, the, the United uh, Protector Ward, and they have had more issues. Oh, on they've country. had a terrible time punting the ball. Might have considered doing what Omer did, was to have that little sprint out and then kick it on the run. Because they are having no luck from deep, place, deep punt placement. 7.32 remaining. In the football game, this drive for Homer Center will start at the United 33-yard line. Homer and confused. They're trying to slip some people in, which they ought to be doing, but unfortunately, nobody knew what was going on. Illegal substitution, Illegal substitution on Homer Center. New lineman Eli Butterly coming into the game for Homer Center. Center remains Joe Suchirelli. Riley Clevenger's been the quarterback since Cole McAnaldi was hurt in the second quarter. McCracken in the backfield, another promising young running back, and he's going to be hit and dropped for a one-yard loss. Clint Sapko on the tackle for the United Lions. They're going to put the football at the 43-yard line, so actually we'll give him a yard of a gain, a uh, gain of a yard, I should say. 7-10 remaining in the football game. Pretty sloppy game. Uh, you know, I think Coach Page is not happy with the performance of his team, even though they are up 28-zip. River Valley will be here next week at Memorial Field. They're struggling also tonight, so uh, it'll be interesting. And now what? Whistle bad snap. and a bad snap. Well, what happened was uh, Riley took it on the ground there with a knee down, and one of the United came a little bit. And folks took offense at that, but it's football. Number 77 in for Homer Center. Northern Cambria has jumped out in front of Cambria Heights, 22 to 14. Wow. I'm not sure if that United They're game is still okay. in a delay. Or not United, I mean uh, River, River Valley, Valley and Portage. Any updated scores on River Valley, Jerry? Might still be in a it weren't delay. Supposed to be, and you uh, have to wonder if the lightning and conditions have maybe got some signal back on the video side. Riley Clevenger hands it off. McCracken with authority near side of the 40 to the 35. 
and they ripped the ball out of his hands. That might be a turnover. United saying they have the football. He was and out of bounds when he got it. Is that? Is that's that's uh, Reba with a heads up play at least. Yeah, it was. He did Four end up with the football. It's Reba. It's up to the official to determine if he caught it in bounds. They're uh, evidently going to keep it with Homer Center. Hard nose running by McCracken. McCracken. King goes for about 12 yards. Isaiah, a Four sophomore, 5'9", 177. 539 remaining in the football game. First Commonwealth Bank postgame show to follow. And the snap to Clevenger gives to McCracken. Little stop and go maneuver. He gets inside the 30 to the 29 for a gain of two, but uh, Homer Center will turn the ball over on down. That ball will turn the ball over. United Lions will take over. Media timeout on the field with 5.28 remaining in the football game. It is Homer Center 28 and the United Valley Lions nothing in our coverage from Memorial Field in Homer City. We'll continue right after this on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. Business happens here and here and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. in a lightning delay at River Valley, still at halftime. It's gonna be a long night yeah, down there. You know, and if it is a heat lighting situation, you know, that, you gotta play it. First and 10, but you don't know that it's a heat lightning you know, that's, situation. That's you are not there as Reba not carries there. the football and Reba has Reba a couple of uh, yards from the 30 to the 32 or 33 yard line. Up off the bottom of the Pile for Homer Center, Isaiah McCracken. He's a promising player, could be a very good linebacker for Homer Center. Yeah, they need some depth, and uh, he's looking pretty good as a running back. Number 60 in the ball game for the Cats. I gotta get my uh, program here and get some of these numbers. We understand our digital TV feed is back as the conditions improve a little bit. Just wonder with all this crazy weather if that didn't impact Verizon a little bit. Who knows? We may never know. Reba gets the handoff again, breaks one tackle. Good hard nose running by Reba on the far side. Josh Veluchik in the ball game for Homer Center. Couple new guys, 77. Zach Vinny, Wilson. Vinny Taglietti on that stop. Bents out. Like Zach in Wilson in. Boys out. Yeah, that's a good idea. Third down and about two from the 38. They need to get to the 40-yard line as we approach the four-minute mark in the football game. 28 to nothing. Homer Center leading United Valley in this first-ever meeting, if you will, between the two teams, the newly merged and formed United Valley. Reba carries for a first down, Reba spinning him across the, the 45 to the 46-yard line for Homer Center's Josh Veluchik. Ward just mentioned came in Josh to the game. The the well, Ward will be able to scoot down Route 119 and take in the second half of <laughs> <laughs> River Valley and Portage. Uh, I think I might the pass on that. Cameron Cavalier in a ball game. Another uh, player that came out for the first time as a senior, Cameron. 
6'2", 151-pound senior. First and 10 United from their own 46. And fumbling the snap, Braden Brown, the quarterback who's in there, had a decent season for Black Lake Valley a year ago. He tries getting around the left hand, but he's stopped by Isaiah McCracken, who's moving pretty well out there, the young sophomore. Two more subs for Homer Center. In trots, Gabe Rufner, and also Sean Holuchik. Also for Homer Center coming in is Dan Jones defensively. Trying to get these guys. Let's see who that middle linebacker is for Homer Center. I formation on second down and 10. And Braden Brown toss right to Reba. Reba runs through one tackle, comes to the 50, to the 45. And they drag him down as he gets to about the 41 yard line. Isaiah McCracken finally making the tackle. Middle linebacker might be Voluchik, or is it? Uh, Let's see how they line up. Lions ball at the 41-yard line of the Wildcats. Clock continues to roll. 2:20 to play in the football game. It's 28 to nothing, Homer Center, as the lightning gets closer to Memorial Field. <laughs> Our spotter Dennis Mester said, "Get these two minutes in the books." I think they would probably just call it at that point. Yeah, I would think so. Lone setback is Reba. Dubs both ways for the Valley, United Valley Lions. Throwing deep, has a man open, and it is caught. Evan Thomas, touchdown, United Valley Lions. And they are on the board with 149 remaining in the football game. It is now Homer Center 28 and the United Valley Lions 6. Black Lake Valley, former quarterback. Robinson. Thomas. Braden. And he is into the Brown. For Lion touchdown. With that touchdown pass. Brown, a junior out of Black Lake Valley High School, and it's 28 to 6. Brown will be the holder here for Nedrich, the kicker. Nedrich sent to attempt the extra point for the Lions. Long snapper, Caden McCauley. 149 left in the football game. Good for United Valley to get on the board. Snap a bit high, and the kick a little bit low. <laughs> it's no good, and the teams will come up field. United's on the board, 70-yard drive. It's now Homer Center 28 and the United Valley Lions 6 on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night, and Renda Digital TV presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club will have a Homer Center kickoff and wrap this thing up when we return on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana College, empowering tomorrow's workforce. Through a strike. Yep. Nice catch also. Little squib kick, and it's going to be jumped on at the 36-yard line 
by Palmer Center's Casey Harper. So 147 remaining. We'll recap things for you on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. Palmer Center will start at the 35 yard line. Oh, it's going to be a slew of new numbers. You know, uh, Ward, if they determine they can't continue that game at River Valley, they might have to come back tomorrow or Monday. I don't know. I, that's probably the case. Oops, sorry not sure about that. What the rule? He knocked the Mastrometer over. That'll really cap off that, the evening. It's expensive. Let's see. Riley Clevenger still the quarterback. There's only three quarterbacks on the team, and they're down to Riley. We'll be asking Greg Page about Cole McAnally and hard nose running from the 35 into United Territory for about 18 yard line. That was Brian Mills. Is that right? That's what he said. I thought it was McCracken. Strong carry for Mills. Up nope, it is 32. Mills. Brian Mills, a sophomore, 5'9", 162. Nice run. 18 yard gain for Mills with 80 seconds left in the football game. Riley Clevenger hands it off to Mills again, and Mills inside the 45 to the 43. Michael Monty in on the stop. Michael Monty on the tackle for the United Valley Lions. Airtime 6:15 next Friday night when River Valley comes to town on WCCS and Renda Digital TV. Second down, about six to go. Taking the direct snap is Clevenger. Hands it off, and the ball carrier this time is Cody Bell, a freshman, and Cody's going to lose yardage as we are down to 40 seconds left in the game and very likely looking. Actually, they do not have to run another play if they don't want to. Loss of four. Looks like Homer Center wants to, so they will. <laughs> Riley Clevenger hands it off. And with the football is Reese Wagner, who's Reece coming Wagner back. He was, had some illness during camp. And Reese gets Rocking the handoff and Kevin some Schultz. positive yardage if we have just uh, witnessed the final play in this Michael football Bonnie. game. So it wasn't a thing of beauty for either side. Homer Center, the preseason favorite to win the Heritage the Conference. Of the game. It is a win for Homer Center, a lot to work on. Granted, they had to play a good chunk of the game without their starting quarterback and their backup not even dressed. And Riley Clevenger did what he needed to do to guide Homer Center to victory. Final score, 28 to six. Did a very nice job. Uh, didn't make too many mistakes. Ran the offense very well. But they do have a lot to work on. You know, they've got to start dominating the line of scrimmage a little more with that big line. And I'm sure that's something Coach Page is crazy about right now. Stay with us for our first Commonwealth Bank post game show. It's up next. We'll recap the game and have inter an interview with head coach Greg Page and a look at the stats too. And we return to Memorial Field in Homer City. The first ever matchup for Homer Center and the newly formed United Valley Lions goes in the win column for Homer Center. Our final score tonight, the Wildcats 28, the Lions 6. And you've been listening to it on Renda Digital TV and the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care.
The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well stocked. Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool. Or how about shuffleboard? What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. The tw booth here at Memorial Field in Homer City, the Wildcats, a successful season debut, and for the first time, the jointure between Black Lake Valley and United High School doesn't go as well, but I think uh, they played reasonably well. They did uh, some good things to build on, I think, Ward Hilliard. Yeah, I, I do too. I, they gave Homer a battle. You know, Homer's a veteran team, and uh, they fought off, fought them pretty well. <laughs> I'm turning my back on this, but uh, I, I thought they did a nice job for the first game. They did the things that I thought they can't do, which makes some, some mistakes. They had some breakdowns. Certainly the punting game was bad. A couple of fumbled snaps. That all works against you, especially as a young team. And uh, But they, they hung in there, and I like the way they battled, and I'm sure so did Coach Marabito. All right, let's recap it for you. United received the first uh, kickoff of the season and went three and out, a 37-yard punt. Homer Center started at their 36-yard line, converted a fourth and one and a third and four, but a penalty and a bad snap kind of bogged them down. They had to punt it away as well. And... Uh, 32-yard Michael Krajosik punt. I guess we're looking into that camera. Ward. So United started at their 14-yard line, a third down and six, a deflected interception as Casey Harper, who hadn't played football since seventh grade, deflected it and it went into the hands of Mason Bell. And Homer Center was in business at the United 29-yard line. First play, they gained five yards. You'll hear the radio replay on the radio, unfortunately, uh, we won't have it on Renda Digital TV, but we'll be right back with you. The uh, touchdown, Cole McAnulty on a second down and five play. Here's the way it sounded. Michael Krajosik added the extra point to make it 7 to nothing after the two-play 24-yard drive, um, and they took advantage of the interception. It was 7 to nothing after one. United uh, had a drive going, but it stalled at Homer Center's 19-yard line at fourth and three. They had a drop snap that um, ended the drive, so Homer Center started at the 19. They had a third and six, and a nice 31-yard run from Cole McAnulty early in that second quarter. Took the football from Homer Center's 37 to United's 32, but unfortunately for Cole, his night would end right there as he sustained an injury. We don't believe it to be serious. We'll find out more from head coach Greg Page, but he never did return. And making matters worse, backup quarterback Angelo Alexander was on the shelf with a concussion sustained in the scrimmage. So on comes senior third stringer, um, Mr. Clevenger. Riley. Riley did a good job. His handoff to Landon Hill netted 16 yards, or 12 yards it was, to United's 16-yard line. And then from the 16-yard line, Michael Krajosik 
on a jet sweep made it 14 to nothing. Krajosik's extra point tacked on. Nine play, 81 yard drive. Took four minutes and 36 seconds. And that was the score at the half as Homer Center outgained United 143 to 59. We moved on to the third quarter. Homer Center scored on their opening possession, which I think from Homer Center's perspective was huge, Ward. They got a nice kickoff return from sophomore Braden Dunn to kind of tee things up. Yeah, he did a nice job. Caught it on the run, had all that momentum going, got him up into good field position, and that momentum just seemed to carry them all the way down the field. As did Landon Hill. He carried four plays for 41 yards on the five-play 52-yard drive, and after a face mask penalty took the ball to the 13-yard line, a heel carry to the one-yard line. Hill finished. And that's the way we stayed heading into the fourth quarter. United, boy, they had some special teams issues too, didn't they? Back-to-back <laughs> -back bad punts. Yeah, they were terrible. And uh, you know, I don't know if they got much yardage at all out of the punts. You can't do that. You can't give a good team great field position. And those are the things that they're going to have to work on, work them out. After one of those bad punts, the Wildcats started at the United 30-yard line on a second and one. Landon Hill went back to work. Two play, 30 yard drive, took just 57 seconds. Extra point, two point conversion uh, was put in by Hill as well to make it 28 to nothing. United did get on the board. Uh, they started a drive with 528 remaining at their own 30 yard line. They drove 70 yards on six plays, got a beautifully thrown pass from backup quarterback Braden Brown, who was the starter last year at Black Lake Valley and put up some decent numbers. And Brown connected with Evan Thomas, who caught it about the 10 yard line and took it in the rest of the way. The PAT was no good, but a nice looking drive, something to build on for United perhaps as they host Penn's Manor next weekend. That was at the 149 mark that they got on the board to set the final at 28 to 6. We'll come back with more on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show, hoping to have both coaches join us up here in the booth when we return on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well stocked. Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool. Or how about shuffleboard? What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. 
Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. Up the victory for Homer Center. Well, for the United Lions, Josh Hessler, he had a nice game. A nice looking running back. 18 carries, 51 yards. Dylan Ambrose had two carries for four yards. Worthington, the quarterback, three carries minus five. Uh, Reba had five carries for 31 yards. Total 29 rushes, in th rushing attempts, 74 rushing yards through the air. Worthington was eight of 16 for 69 yards and an interception. Brown came in one of one for 41 and a touchdown. So that's a pretty good percentage. Total of 46 offensive plays, 184 yards for the United Valley Lions. For Homer Center, Landon Hill, that really got it going the second half. 16 carries, 121 yards, two touchdowns. Cole McEnany only had three carries for 61 yards and a touchdown. Braden Dunn, two carries for 12. Michael Krajosik, three carries, 18 yards. One of those was a touchdown. And Clevenger, uh, Riley, had four carries, three yards. Uh, in his efforts, McCracken also had three carries for 13 yards. So Homer had 36 rushes, 215 yards, passing two of five through the year with an interception for 12 yards. The interception, I think, was uh, not McAnulty, but it was... Mason Bell off of the deflection. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I about the pass. Homer that threw an interception. I don't remember that. was that. Reba at the goal line, and he brought that's it out right, to the 20-yard right. line. And a total of 41 offensive plays, 227 yards, which is pedestrian, I think, for this team. So they've they're got some work to do as well for and, Homer Center. Yeah, and in fairness, you're playing with a third-string quarterback True. who uh, they're – Good thing they gave reps to during the preseason because <laughs> you never know what might happen, and the never know actually happened here in the opening week. And you look at uh, uh, Worthington last year against River Valley. He lasted into the third quarter, and he's knocked out for the season. So injuries are a part of the game. Everybody goes through it, but Homer Center's been hit here uh, in the early part of the season. We'll talk to Greg Page about Cole McAnulty's situation and his health and more after this 28 to six Wildcat victory as the first Commonwealth Bank postgame show rolls on right here on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always...
How'd Indiana do? Thank you very much, Michael Burdick. As we come back into the booth, we're going to do something I don't think I've ever done <laughs> for Coach's Corner tomorrow, too, all at the same time. We have United Valley head coach Kevin Marabito, Homer Center head coach Greg Page. I know you guys are friends, and I felt comfortable asking, and I'm glad you guys obliged because I think you'd both agree uh, this football game was uh, – like a lot of opening weeks, I think there's a lot to work on on